Hey guys, Harry here, back again with another Brit Lane vlog. Uh, it's Sunday when I'm recording this, um, the footage is from Friday, when we're finishing this table off, uh, I think it's just me in this footage finish off the second corner, and then running a bit of brickwork in, in between them, and you can see the massive, massive corners. The reason I did this, and I didn't really touch on it in the last video, um, was just because of the tightness, it was so tight, and... I didn't want to keep bending over doing massive, uh, doing little corners and then running in little corners. And it was so tight with this one board scaffold basically where my, my spot board was taking up the three boards and then there was one board I was working on basically on one and a half boards. Uh, I just wanted to try and get as much gear shifted as I could, try and get out of them corners. And I've had a look since and uh, I've found better what a method of doing the facial and soffit cut-ups um a bloke called coolen coolen brickworks i've seen this video before where he uses some spring clips um they look a little bit like jump lead clips that you use on your car if you want some reference but you use those clamp them over the facial and soffit he uses 25 millimeter uh, spring clips obviously i ordered some roughneck ones which the same as he was using I presume you can use any spring clips that are that 25mm, have like a 25mm sort of, uh, I think they, they grit to the width of 25mm and obviously the why you have them as small as possible is so they have the maximum you know, tension and grip. He, you'll see in the video as a brick suspended off the line at each side and he just moves the clip up 75mm and the line runs flush to the fascia uh, and soffit, or the soffit, uh, whichever one the bottom, <laughs> bottom part is. Um, but what you can do is use this technique but just pinning your, you know, instead of tying your, your, your lines and pins around a brick, which will probably fuck your line up in the long run, just, uh, just, just get your pin and bang it into three or four courts below on the cut up, uh, into like a bed joint or something that's gone off obviously. Um, obviously if you're going higher and higher, just be a bit more careful where you're banging it. And then obviously hook it around that spring clip and then away you go, just measure your 75, obviously it helps having a tape measure on your waist or on your pocket, like I do. And uh, you can just go from there, there's no corner building involved and, um, and it doesn't put any tension on the actual brick itself. That first brick you lay, you just have to leave your, your cut off, so you lay your first full brick that you can sort of off of the face and soft it and then on your next course you'll come back and fill in the little piece, uh, whatever that uh, piece is. But yeah, that's a that's a little that's a little bit of a, a method that he left a comment. The bloke cool and uh, cool and brickworks left a comment on the, on my last video and, and mentioned that. And I'd seen the video already, but I couldn't remember who made it or what he did or what sort of clip he used. But I went and ordered myself a couple of them clips for about two fifty on Amazon uh, per twenty five mil spring clip by Roughneck. Really little, you know really easy little trick you can use uh, I've used something similar before with uh, putting a a, uh, a groove in the uh, fate in the soffit with a knife Stanley knife but you need a sharp Stanley um, idea like an insulation knife something like that but you can't you can risk fucking up the face fucking up the soffit like that so obviously it's uh, this is, it seems a little bit easier you know what I mean a bit easier to move your line up and down as well <laughs> So for anyone uh, who is feeling the change of temperature with the uh, cold weather that's coming, uh, today's topic's going to be about uh, working while you're not feeling too good. You know, working while you either got a cold, a bit of tonsillitis or whatever. Uh, I've got a little bit at the moment, bit of, bit of sore throat, bit of tonsils, you know, scabbing up a bit. Um, get it every year, you know, I don't, I never had a, I've never had a sick day, but, you know, it's one of them, how do you approach when you're not feeling very well? Uh, obviously, it comes on to the, the topic of, like, this clip, on, in this footage, I was feeling very rough, uh, not feeling good at all, but uh, how do you go about, you know, working on price when you're not feeling very well? You know, a lot of people tend to just throw the towel in if they're not feeling 100% and uh, and don't even, you know, have a day off, but there's still things you can do. You know, if you're... You've just not got to get your expectations as high as when you're feeling on the, you know, on point and you're feeling 100% and the weather's perfect. It's in winter, depending on what gear you're laying, depending on whether it's clay bricks, concrete bricks, 
you can have the same issue with clay bricks if they're, if they're not been covered and they're saturated that you do with concrete. You've got to really, you know, not expect too much of yourself. You've got to lower your expectations on some days. If you're feeling rough, if you're on, uh, you know, the front or the back of an house where it ain't maybe as easy or ain't maybe as straight, you know, and there's not as much, you know, meat in it, you can't expect to lay the same amount of bricks that you would on a gable or you would run in a boundary wall with no pillars or something like that. And there's, um, that's one thing I like to emphasize to, to bricklayers and even guy, even seasoned guys who are watching this who are fucking double my age and probably more. Um, you know, every time winter comes around, you're gonna earn less every week. You know, there's gonna be weeks where you earn more. Some, you know, if you get a, a clear patch, but on average, you're probably gonna earn a little bit less because of the weather, because of losing time, because of just things that slow you down, which you don't. You don't normally get as many disruptions in summer, and I think people have got it is a massive yeah it's a mind uh, a mind fuck if you if you want to put it that way, you know we all you know we're all working five six days a week in summer no no days off and then it suddenly comes to winter, and you you know sometimes you're lucky to get three days in. so what I recommend uh, and I like the mentality I like to take is if you can work three days that's your full week you know if you if you're you know if you get in three days worth of work you know full full three days you know you want you need to class that especially coming into more of the winter months now i know we're only in the end of october so to, from november to like february if you get three days in, you've got to class that as a good week i don't care who you are you know you've got to really sort of lower your expectations in uh, in winter there is going to be days where you're going to you're gonna get five days and even six if you're working Saturdays and stuff like some do. Some even work seven on privates and stuff like that. But there, there, you've I've got a really. It is a, it is a job. It is a trade. Obviously, us, us bricklayers every year it shocks us every year. Winter comes round, we're having two or three days off a week in some respects. The gears piss wet on the days we are working. We're sometimes not getting as much done, you know, because of, uh, you know, because of the conditions. And you've got to really um, accept. You've got to sort of become, have, you know, uh, sort of be at peace with the fact that that's what's going to happen. I've had, uh, I've had that this conversation with Dean and Mel. Obviously, Mel's, you know, she's my wife in a sense. You know, if we're not married, but you know, um, she's been with me ever since I've, you know, I've been Brit Lane, and she knows what happens in winter. You know, she knows what happens. But for someone who has come from a five day a week job nine to five or whatever five days a week you know 23 all his year or whatever 28 all his year you know it's it's something that a lot this is what puts a lot of people off a brick lane this is why a lot of trades you know i see sometimes they're joiners moaning or scaffolders moaning at this this and that but um about not having enough work or not having enough this and that but then they don't realize that those bricklayers were losing two months three months minimum a year um you can, you know, take off, you know, uh, a week of your voluntary holidays. You've got two weeks at Christmas where sites close unless you're doing privates and don't affect you. And um, and you've got the fact of weather. You've got weather, so you've got three weeks already that you're losing a year out of 52, and then you've probably got a potential another, uh, a potential another, uh, you know, eight weeks on top of that, eight to... 12 weeks on top of that with losing time with forklifts breaking silos breaking um you know mortar not turning up you know too cold to lay too wet to lay too much rain too much wind you know there's all sorts that can uh you know you're getting your way but you've got to just take low expectation and lower your lower your uh lower your cost of living you know don't live beyond your means in a sense live to you know 60 percent you know if you if you know if you're working you know five days a week you know three days of that is 60 percent. so if you can live on three days um you know working three days a week and you can live you know comfortably you know not extravagantly just comfortably you know you haven't got any external stresses that you find with people who are sort of living uh with with, with ridiculous outgoings or have got themselves into debt or into financial difficulty which 
everyone has the times where it's harder and it's easier. I've had, I struggled tremendously when I was buying my own house. Um, you know, you know, uh, legal fees and fucking home insurances and fixed rate or variable rate mortgage and all that rubbish. I was on the phone constantly googling what everything meant. It was a nightmare. But you've got to, you have to real when when I first got my mortgage from my house we sat I sat down with the mortgage broker on the phone and talked about a budget plan a plan of living you know like a cost of living plan that uh, you know that we talked about and at the time I hadn't, I hadn't been putting a lot of my earnings through my books because I was jumping around firms I was struggling to get my my uh, earnings earnings uh, slips for the year when I was when you jump to like three or four firms five firms in a year you sometimes ring up and they don't and you can't get through to the office you can't get your earning slips and you know I was I wasn't putting a lot through my books in a sense there's not I wasn't putting a lot of my earnings through in my uh, in my tax return I wasn't earning that much obviously because I was um, less experienced than that and I was chasing the fucking chasing the money in a sense it was when the prices were on the move from when we were on like three 350, 400 to what they are now at 650. So I was sort of cha- jumping around trying to find which was paying better and stuff like that. And as it is, you know, when you leave firms or jack up out of frustration and stuff, not losing your last week's wage if you don't complete your works or don't square your lifts up and stuff like that. I was doing all that. And luckily, when I got my mortgage, I, uh, you know, I got my mortgage on a pretense and with my earnings, my living budget. Uh, that I was earning probably half of what I do now, so and it's been something that I've, I've you know, thank Milky Stars for 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 years. Well, for the last you know, we've been in this house two years, two years, and I've from the the times where I've been having days off with stuff wrong with our young un, uh, he's been pulling with you know weather and stuff like that, bad winters, bad working invite working, uh, inv- you know bad sites where we're not earning you know when you when you when you can live on 50 percent capacity it makes a massive you know it takes a big uh, burden off of your off of your you know it takes a lot of stress away from work and you i got to worry about losing days and stuff and uh you know a lot of guys say save 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 yep save by all means but don't save too much because at the moment inflation is going fucking nuts so <laughs> best to probably invest in if you're fucking saving ridiculous amounts of money but you know save some money for a rainy day literally and you aren't got to worry then from when you are losing time for various reasons you can you know and relax and put your full focus into you know the days you are getting in and not thinking about the days that you're losing every week you know a lot of guys are a, a lot of bricklayers are a glass um half empty or whatever it is you know uh, you know, neg- they're always thinking what you know, look how much I've lost instead of thinking how much you've actually gained from the days you've worked. That's why I always like to count what I earn in a day instead of what I earn in a week. That's completely, you know, you, if you count your weekly earnings from week to week and you gauge that, you you can really get your your head in a bad place with thinking. You know, you can uh, it's it inflates your earnings sometimes some weeks everything went perfect you had perfect conditions perfect runs of work um and that isn't uh, repeatable whereas if you measure your daily you know what you're doing day to day what you're earning uh, day to day and you add them all up over even when you've lost days and stuff like that you haven't got you uh, you gain a, a more realistic sense of what of uh, you know of how you're coping in winter what you're earning and stuff like that and i just find it so much easier to to gauge everything in winter and uh, you keep more positive that way because I used to be a person uh, when I was younger I used to get frustrated in winter when I was losing days and uh, you know and uh, I took the wrong approach I took the wrong approach whereas now I'm thankful for every day I work you know I'm uh, in winter and uh, even in summer you know with the with with how we've been uh, struggling with materials and whatnot over the last few months, it's it's been a. I always count my lucky stars every time we get a good uh, a full week in or a or a four day week at least, and um, it's it's definitely a good outlook to have. It's definitely a good outlook. To have. That's just my little uh, two cents on the uh, on, on on dealing with the the the, the tropes of winter in Britain. Uh But anyway, I'll um 
as you can see here, just running in this last few course. Um, that was like one of the topics of today's voiceover. I've got, I'm gonna make, I'm trying to make the videos about 30 minutes, just so they're not getting tremendously long and they don't bore everyone. Because I, I do tend to ramble on, and you know, guys will just click off and think, oh, put me in hell, Harry, chill out, you know. You know, don't don't you know, don't talk me to sleep already. It's it's I'm trying to enjoy it last of my week and it's it's Sunday. I'm already falling asleep. But yeah, um it's just something that you know that I've thought has been a good outlook and uh it, it applies to this, the, the regular bricklayer who just turns up to work, you know, get you know, get some work down, books in at end at week, that's it, you know. I am not talking about the businessman, the the man with a you know what a business going on, man with multiple private jobs, multiple side jobs, multiple streams of income. I'm not talking about that. Just the regular, you know, nine to five bricklayer in a sense, or seven wall four bricklayer, um, eight wall four bricklayer, whatever. Who who is the main source of income? Is yeah, you know, their only revenue stream is, you know, bricklaying on site every week, just as mine is. You know, um, I don't know uh, next to nothing off you. I don't know anything off YouTube really it's not worth even uh, count, it, uh, count it as an income stream but it's um, it's some of that I'm, I love doing I love making these voiceovers and videos it gives me a, a, an, a, an avenue to voice my opinions that I never really get to voice to anyone because they're fucking boring <laughs> but people on, on YouTube in the Brit Lane uh, who like watching Brit Lane videos obviously sit and listen so uh, but yeah um, so yeah, uh, another thing I think I touched on it in the last video. I've, I've stopped trying to do the angle cuts around the gable ladder. I saw I saw Kurt Molepass doing a video. He's not been doing many videos recently, but I saw a head cam where he was just cutting a little piece and straight jointing it up the, the face and soffit. And it looks just as good. You can't ever, you'll never see it. You can never see it up that right up the edge of that gable ladder unless you're really freaking looking. You know, um, it's. Uh, uh, to send to me, send them. I'm trying to stop getting demonetized, but anyway, uh, try not to drop any more f bombs. Um, but yeah, I saw that video, and it's something that I've, 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 I've over, after last week, we were, they, were, they were nitpicking over some stupid stuff. I've just sort of, I, I, I told, I said a few, probably a few weeks ago, that I was going to settle into this site and just relax a bit more, not be as anxious about quality and stuff, and I've now relaxed into a bit more of a flow and uh, I think all of us, we, some people, you know, everyone has their own own mentality towards, you know, the, the work quality and stuff, but especially when you're on site and you're, you're dealing with rough conditions or your gear isn't perfect or the site isn't perfect, you've got to just find a happy medium with your quality. You're not going to try to be the best, the neatest bricklayer in the world because at the end of the day, you should only be trying to, you know, achieve that that top quality if you're getting, if you're getting paid top money and the rates we're getting on site aren't anything like what you get, you know, doing private or self builds or whatever your um, other other uh, you know types of work in the in the building trade. So you and you've got to match match the uh, the quality around you. You know, there's no point. There's nothing bigger, nothing clever by being the neatest bricklayer on site. Um, you know, you want to keep to everyone else's standards. You know, what everyone else is doing, you do. And I'm I know it isn't a good way to look at it, but at the end of the day. Uh, if you're losing yourself half a day a week by just trying to be a bit finicky and nitpicky, um, you could be, you know, getting that extra half a day and you know getting some more gear down and getting a bit more laid. So you've got to have a realistic look on your quality and just keep it, keep it to a good standard, but don't agonise over the little, the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. I, I made a video months and months ago about that. Just don't sweat the small stuff. Don't let you know, uh, comments from nitpicky managers, not your confidence and stuff like that. I know a lot of guys, they're ready to jack up as soon as someone criticises the work and it's one of them things. No, you'll not please every manager. Um, that's probably why they're in the job. Do you know what I mean? They're not there to be pleased, so they're just managing the site, as it says in the name of the job title. You've got to just do your work to the ability you feel comfortable with and uh, fast enough and able to earn a crust. Um... So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm waxing myself. I'm waxing my, you know. I'm trying to be neat, you know. I'm trying to be neat, but in situations where we get fucking shafted with scaffolds, like you know, gable ladders swooping all over the place, you know, um, just just uh, you know, crap crap organisation. Sometimes 
I just do what I can. I just blast them in, do what I can, make them what they eat. I have been a bit finicky with the top and tailing and stuff and the, and the brushing off, but recently, uh, I'm just, you know, it, it makes a good job on these concretes if, um, you know, you give them a good strike, quick brush off, and they look pretty good, you know. It, they do sometimes, the joints aren't as, as nice and sharp as if they've, you know, if they're, uh, you know, heart gone off a bit stiffer once you're brushing, but it makes a good fit, it makes a good enough finish, I'll call it, and that's what I'm, I'm getting my head around now, you know, on this, uh, on this side, I'm trying to just get make a good happy medium. You're not going to make a fantastic job in in winter of these bricks. You know you're going to have stuff belly out on you, and that's another thing I'm I'm taking um, an extra you know precaution. I'm just plumbing up my gables every at the, when I've when I've done you know especially near meter boxes where they're where they're looking at now they're keen on uh, basically my corners when I'm taking my profiles off, shove the level up. Meter boxes where that little mini pillar is in middle, shove the level up. Obviously, back reveals. I've been doing pulling my reveals, which I never used to do. I just used to obviously run it through for a profile, but I'm gonna pull them up after I've run them in with a profile and just check them, make sure there's no belly in them. Because it is one thing these managers they are looking for on this site is bellied brickwork, uh, brickwork, and it's like it's not that we're laying it like that. It's that the gear doesn't support going up so high in some days and. I might try just not going as high sometimes. I'm going to see. I'm going to experiment, see what I can get away with, see what uh, is, uh, you know, I'm able to make everyone's wage doing, see what strategy is best to earn wages and stuff. So, yeah. Apart from that, um, that's today's video. I hope everyone's enjoyed. I'm, uh, I'm going to have a nice takeaway now. Uh, I had a, well, it's Sunday, so we normally have takeaway all the time, but. Uh, on a on a weekend, but I had taco, I had a bit of Taco Bell this morning, a bit of Costa. I went and had a beer with my old man last night. I got a bit, well, I wasn't really that drunk, but I got drunk enough to fall asleep. And then, and then we went out. We got we got them. We got my our son Archer. We got him his first big boy bed today. We got him a single from a cot bed to a single. So all big. I'm going through big changes. Uh, he's the little one, and. Uh, he still tries to flip his mattress up even though, even though it's a single so he can't do it so I might even sew it down to tear wrap it down to the bed so he can't flip his mattress like he used to if anyone's got everyone's got uh, kids they used to uh, young toddlers they ever used to flip the bed upside down and like lay on the floor on a blanket it's so uncomfy but he does it every night can't get him to sleep in bed but yeah but yeah um Apart from that, you know, um, coming on to the next video, um, you probably might see a bit more running in of this, uh, and then I'm going to start recording probably tomorrow, no, probably Tuesday, um, because it's give good weather next week until Friday, I'm going to probably record me doing some jack walls, because we plan tomorrow on the on the new, new plot that you guys haven't seen for a bit since I did the block corner building video, we've got a gable up, I've got a gable up full height, uh, nine course, some guys are going nine in a brick, but I'm just doing nine course, foot putting that brick on. Um, nine course, and then we've got the back up, obviously both gables. I'm going to put the front up on Monday. That's tomorrow. And I'm going to uh, back that up with a bit of block work, four or five course, with a bit of uh, white work, leaving leaving out for my jack walls. And then uh, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to take the other gable up for light with the block work. And then hopefully I can get, hopefully I'm probably, my, my plan is just to do everything by the jack wall last. Um, I might do back front, back it with brickwork, then put some on the jack wall. Uh, and then, and then fill me back some front reveals in, because they are a traditional reveal, built reveal. Like a 200 or a 205 piece, you know, returning to the reveal. You yeah, haven't got reveal blocks, I've asked the, I've asked the managers, they just laughed at me and said, oh no, don't pay for the stuff like that, and I thought, oh, well, you could have just said no, uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got to build them, which is a ball eight, so I'm, I'm, I've already set my first block to the reveal what it wants to be set at, and then I'm, I'm going to drill an hole and stick a profile up each side to build them a bit easier. And then, um, also what I like to do is um, I do a stick a couple of tie wires out to support that reveal block piece and I put a tie wire in every reveal block anyway so it don't break off when you try to strap a patio door to it and stuff like that so that's what I'm going to be doing um, so brickwork, bit of block, block work backed up and then 
the Tuesday I'm going to fill in um, do running a bit of Jack Wall half height probably that'll get us a day and then on the on the Wednesday uh, I'll probably f finish off the white work and the reveals and then I uh, might have time to get a couple more course on the Jack Wall and I reckon on Thursday we'll be just finishing a Jack Wall off while Dean loads out the next plot and we should be able to get some a brickwork corner up on the Thursday and then we'll hopefully see where the weather is by then. At least we've got ourselves another drop right next to each other so no no uh, trouble shifting gear about. And yeah, that is the plan. So anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. Next video you'll see will probably be a bit more running in on this and then you'll see some jet wall action I reckon. Um, yeah, that's my plan. I, I might record me doing it front but there's only four windows in front. Two on each house, so it's fucking no really. Um, yeah. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.